recording. There we go. Okay. 6.14 p.m. Call this meeting to order. And shall we do a roll call, which we don't normally do, but virtual meeting? Ah, oh, there you are. Yay. Jean, do you have audio? Okay. Is there a chat on here? She probably just doesn't have a microphone. That was happening to me in the uh, in my office. That's why I came out here. Okay. Let me just chat with her. Yeah, what did Matt just say about that? Uh, that's usually if someone's wearing a headset, and it looks like Jean is not using a headset, so. Okay. It, but. Said she was, yes. Right, Jean? Yes. Oh. She switched it to you, what? To the camp. Try, you could try switching back, but who knows? Okay. An odd gift I have is reading lips pretty well, so I can tell, <laughs> I can tell a little bit of what she's saying. Okay. I can tell by the head motions. And the mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So officially, now we're all here. Call to order, 6.14 p.m. Um, I had put on the agenda approved meeting minutes, and I physically have copies of some of the meeting minutes here. But I think it is best that we do that in an in-person meeting because you each should have a physical copy when we're approving the meetings. And mm -hmm. we haven't done that previously, um, which is of concern. And I was alerted to the fact from Ellen Griffin um, before, and I had made mention this was right before Adam had left about that. And not realizing that, you know, hey, we didn't have that on our agenda and that should have been integrated into the meeting. So therefore, at our next meeting in March, I think it's best that we try to approve all the meeting minutes and have copies dispersed to everybody. And I'm going to disperse those copies digitally because to try to print up all those copies would be kind of crazy. So... Anyways, um, any discussion on that comment? Nope. No, I agree. Oh, oh, there you are. Hearing. I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, I had I had my um, microphone turned all the way down because I have so many birds and wild animals in my house that I try to shut okay. that off if I'm in a Zoom meeting with other people. So. And okay. I don't have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Yep. Um, I had put down, I thought I put down, geez, um, goals. Well, I put member updates and comments. Um, yeah, I did put goals. Okay. Member updates and comments. Josie, you are in sync with what's going on with the North Central Chamber, and I've seen a few things. So that's a great thing. Any updates or info you can share with us regarding what's happening with what they're doing? No? I haven't been as involved in the past month. I've had some okay. pretty spontaneous travel that's absorbed okay. my time. I do go to their Community Leadership Institute. Um, I'm a part of that program. And so I see okay. a lot of them there. As far as what's going on in North Central Massachusetts and what the chamber has a hand on, I can get an update from next time. Um, okay. I've been directing a lot of my attention towards the Lunenburg Business Association and trying to engage right. local businesses through that. Okay. Anything happening with LBA right now? I get the regular emails. You guys... I yeah. noticed a lot more emails in terms of with what's going on. So that's one of the changes, and I'm really glad that you're getting those. Um, yep. I do try to send those out regularly. Uh, we're working on getting a subscription button on the website, which we don't have right now. Right now, okay. we just have to um, almost just manually add the businesses that are oh. members. Um, 
to the list. Um, so we're trying to get to the point where we can engage more residents and see and allowing them to see what local businesses are doing. Our Facebook okay. page is really active and we do have a okay. lot of residents mixed with local businesses following that, which is a great outreach. Yeah, um, that's tool. good. Um, so we've gotten several new members already since the elections that happened in November. Um, for those that don't know, I was elected president, um, Judy and Fred Gosselis from the Lunenburg Diner was um, elected vice president. Oh, right. Mike Matthews with Pixelated Tech is treasurer and Michelle um, Beliza, Beliza is um, clerk. So okay. we've been working together and we've added, um, we have routine meetings every second Tuesday of the month followed by the board meetings where we can, the first meeting is to hear from members. And we've gotten a lot of good feedback about uh, members wanting to engage with the community more um, with outreach opportunities. They want more access to resources. So we've been trying to partner. I can't use the word partner. <laughs> it gets- Collaborate. Uh, collaborate. Thank you. We've been trying to uh, collaborate with other resources um, trying to reach out to like the Center for Women and Enterprise and kind of form a more professional relationship with the North Central Chamber, not through just me as a member, through my own personal right. business, but the Lunenburg Business Association and the Chamber of Commerce and how we can work together. Um, okay. So we're focusing on that. And then we do have a lot of upcoming events that we're talking about doing. Um, one that is happening is in March, we're having a meet the LBA new member drive um, okay. at the, um, the reboot. Okay. Uh, we're working on picking a date for that. Um, but what that'll be is just an opportunity for those that are curious to come and meet with us and hear about what we're doing and our goals for this year and to learn more from the community and businesses. We're also okay. having um, um, we are trying to we're kind of in the brainstorming phase of an all vendor market. So you have okay. a farmers market that is more so towards um, farmers. <laughs> and then you have like an artisan market for artists right. and um, trade people there. Um, but what about the local IT company? What about the local plumbing company? What about, you know, all those other companies that uh, don't really fit into those typical market themes? Yeah. Um, so our idea is to open it up to all, all vendors, all companies, and have almost like a flight of Lunenburg businesses and surrounding towns uh, where residents can come and see what the local offerings are for them and for other businesses can, to connect. So those are some of the things that we're, okay. we're projecting for. Looking at doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's a lot. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, Mary Ray, you had some ideas before and I know you mentioned you had some ideas. So... <laughs> Wanted to hear what your ideas were too. <laughs> um, I forget. <laughs> now that I put you I on know. the spot. They were ag related, weren't they? No? I think so. Agcom, yeah. Knowing you, they were most definitely ag related. I know, yeah. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but okay. um, Jackie from In the Meadow Farm, this was kind of cool that she brought to our ag meeting um, last week was um, when's the anniversary? Um, it is 2028. Um, so she was thinking of having like an agricultural fair that okay. would be specific to um, it would be different from the farmer's market 
and it okay. would be more of like a traditional ag fair where you would have like antique tractors and um, no craft vendors, no candles, anything like that, just all agricultural things from in town. And um, like she could bring tractors, a pack of, yeah, and um, um, Hardwick has a really, really cool town fair that's kind of more catered toward, yep. towards ag. Um, so we were kind of like trying to use that as an example um, for one of the, because aren't, aren't they trying to figure out different events throughout the year to kind of showcase and do things for the town? Um, so that was kind of a cool thing she thought of. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. There's a lot of ideas proposed for 2028, and I think they'll start to all kind of play out as, you know, as time goes on. It's going to be busy. Um, from what I've seen, I've only been to two anniversary committee meetings thus far. Um, I, had, I think I sent you the thing I was talking about. I know what you're talking about now. For the anniversary, town anniversary? It's something different. That I was trying to okay. show. It was like a. Um, it was specific to EDC, wasn't it? Like oh. it was the Christmas, um, the oh, Christmas oh, tour oh. or something. Okay. And having um, holiday tour. Yeah, but it was specific to Lunaberg businesses, and it was kind of um, like you figure out which businesses want to um, join in, and you have okay. kind of like a brochure ticket type of thing and when you go to each okay. business you get um like they're having a sale or something like that and right um, let me find it so i don't butcher the idea of trying okay to <laughs> is it kind of like a business crawl yeah it was it was like okay. that but it was during the holiday <laughs> season yeah um, so they have like the pizza crawl in lemonster the coffee crawl right yeah um yeah. Let me find it. I'll find it. I did a small business crawl. Well, this was years back. Um, when I ran for office and we took a bus tour and went to all the different businesses. And it was nice because it really, you were able to like network with people in each yeah. of the places. But that's a great idea. It's all about time of year, too, when you can do it. Yeah. There's also the, well, kind of while we're waiting, the town official meet and greet, uh, right, Mary Ray? Oh, yeah. For um, September. Do it that, the same time? I think so. And I, I think it was a perfect time of year. Yeah, it would be neat yeah. to get some of those like stand up heater things and yeah. and kind of elaborate oh, a little more. Um, yeah, because last time we didn't we didn't get any special permits, but it would be neat to get like um, like a coffee trailer there or something. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah, we could always um, dress it up like the yeah like that party that we had down there. Yeah, um, but it would be a good he, idea to start working on that now. I mean, if we know what's happening. Um, I think going right down the list and incorporating all the businesses, you know what I mean? Trying to get donations from each of them like we had done, yeah. but it wasn't everybody. You know, like Reboot yeah. may want to do something. Il Forno may want to do something. Right. That would be I mean, a too, if we if we did figure out if we wanted to do like the Christmas business crawl, that would be a perfect opportunity to announce it and figure out what businesses wanted to join. Like if we had all the details ready for it, we could figure out that would just be a good place to kind of announce it and that kind of thing. It would also be a good idea yeah. for each organization so the economic development committee and the master plan committee that has like events that we're trying to engage the community and um take surveys and whatever and then we know the lba is trying to have all of these events because we have with the lba we have events in september and events in october that are going to be happening that happen every year but it would be nice to um 
to pick a date as soon as possible for all of these things and almost have like a schedule, like a calendar print off Timeline. that we can distribute, distribute through the town hall and uh, post on the town website and just have everybody up there almost so that we don't have a competition for, oh, I can't do that tonight, tomorrow, right. something else. And I can't get a babysitter like two nights in a row. Um, right, right. But to, but to kind of play off of each other, like if there's not something happening this month, that's a good opportunity for to uh, plan, in to other plan words. so that yeah. we're not so that we have the bandwidth each organization but we're still actively all contributing right. and engaging the community which benefits yeah. the economy well, so here we and the thing <laughs> is time flies by so fast <laughs> that it probably is wise the more planning the better you know um, that's why when I say goals, it's like, you know, if we could get things in a system, that would be great. I, I found it. The Gardner News had put out an article. So it says, um, get your holiday shopping done while supporting local businesses and having a chance to win $950 with the 18th annual Country Road Holiday Tour. This year, 19 North Central Massachusetts farms and businesses are participating in the month-long tour starting Friday, November 10th and ending Sunday, December 10th. Huh. Central Mass residents can grab a stamp card from any of the 19 stores to begin the tour. The grand prize winner receives a gift certificate bundle of $50 to spend at each participating business, a total value of $950. There will be the 19 second prize winners... There will be 19 second prize winners and they will receive a $50 gift certificate for one of the 19 businesses. Each business is donated two $50 gift certificates for the event. After obtaining a stamp card from one of the local businesses, residents must collect at least five stamps to be eligible for one of the 19 prizes for the second place winners. To be eligible for the first place prize, all 19 stamps must be collected. Stamps must be collected by Friday, December 10th to be eligible for any prizes. And then it gives um, the local businesses participating are in seven communities, Philipston, Templeton, Hubbardston, Gardner, Winston, Petersham, and Barry. Here's a list wow. of local businesses. Um, so obviously we don't have to get other communities involved. It would just be kind of cool to do, um, Lunenburg. do a small scale one and see how it goes. But that, yeah. that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, I think a stamp card is a great idea because then it just gets people to frequent. You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. Um, yeah. No, that's a great idea. I'm going to save this so I have it too. Could you send that, Mary Ray, and we can yeah. send yep. it out through the town email? That's a great idea. Okay. So that could be one of the goals too, in terms of, you know, having that function and, and doing um, a crawl too, a business crawl. I think that's a great idea. So just getting that all set up is going to be fun. <laughs> there is, um, so representative state rep Scarsdale and her team have, brought together I would call it a round table of like the first Middlesex County um, yeah first Middlesex district representatives so yeah April select board air um, yeah so there's a representative from each air town at the round table and the goal, the goal is to collaborate as you say <laughs> with these towns so that we just it's almost to and I've only attended one meeting and I think they're just trying to like start the snowball rolling down the hill type of thing where, um, so right now, what I understand from it is that they want people that are looking in at Lunenburg, for instance, they see a rural community. Right. What does that have to offer? And then they want to like light that up and to find everything that these towns have to offer their characteristics individually and um kind of work together and bounce off of each other in formatting like a almost a website a hub um hmm. of information okay. um, 
so one of the things that they had talked about doing was to collect, like we're talking about all of these events. And as soon as we know what's happening locally, we would just collect all the information and send it to them. And then they would have a packet of like, oh, Pepperell on these dates, this is what's happening. Air on these dates, this is what's happening. Lunenburg, this is what's happening. And it would just be a really comprehensive well, I think the more you, the volume of information that goes out, the more you can disperse that. I mm -hmm. think going to like the North Central Chamber is important, but then you also have the Neshoba Chamber too. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So those in conjunction, because what they're trying to do is in a sense, a kind of a replication of some of what like, you know, Melissa at, at Neshoba does and, mm -hmm. and boy at, North Central does. Do you know what I mean? So, so but the more it gets out there, I mean, mm -hmm. the better it is. You know, they, for the last meeting I was in Oklahoma and I missed it. It was on the 19th and they had Melissa and Roy come representing the chambers. So to oh, get, together, they came and they did a 10 minute presentation each on what's happening in the region yep. um, for each and how they're working together, how they're working separately and what's happening in North Central, what's happening in Neshoba and um, what they needed to amplify the success that they already have and the goals that yep. they already have in place. Uh, they both but, do a lot, mm -hmm. you know, both well, Melissa and Roy. The goal of that round table, because I mean, they're still working on a name for it, <laughs> but the goal of that is to, um, to get people looking at us a little yeah. more and to, all right, what is Lunenburg? <laughs> and to really dive in and dissect what that actually is um, yeah. so that so that we're not forgotten one and so that yeah. the economy grows we have people coming here what are open spaces why do people want to come here and um, just to amplify the things that we already cherish as a community and to invite others and to enjoy it so Good. but that's happening and i'm still learning about Good. it so as i learn more okay. i'll push it to this group but it would okay. be nice kathy if you have time sometime yep. to come to yep. it yeah yeah, um, yeah. Anybody else from this committee to come in? Are they including like Lancaster in that group too, Josie? Do you know? Or I, Shirley? I, Shirley's there. Melissa must. Yeah. Do you know um, who's from Shirley? I have a list of everybody's names and what department they're in. Okay. Like the towns and chamber, oh, not the towns, the towns and um, business association. Oh, yeah. The president of that is their representative Julia. Townsend. So okay. Um, so there's just like a mixture of I'm I'm on the economic development committee. I'm not the chair, yep. but I'm there. Uh, I'm like there's so there's they're pulling people yeah. from committees or select boards right. or any type of representative from the town. So I think it would be a good idea right. if you could come. Um, when is it held? Is it early morning? I think it's more like 10. Okay. And it's usually on, huh. I think it's like the last Friday, but I Okay. I need to check that. Okay. Yeah, let I me do, know when it is. I'll try to will. come. They just had one, so they'll have one again next month. Um okay. but I plan on talking to um Michael Ray. He attended the yep. first one of the first meetings that they had. Um Okay. But I plan on talking to him about what he learned from that meeting. But I think okay. it's it's a good thing for people to be aware of, at least. And yep. all of this yep. that we're talking about, it ties to that in a way. Because if they're even if we have nothing to do with it, and even if they just have that pamphlet showing what's happening in each right. town, that's some information that we can push to them. Um, right, right. As time moves on, going back to the anniversary committee, I think there'll be a whole host of events as we get farther down. It's weird that it's 2024 right now, but <laughs> those will be events too that, you know what I mean? All these things can be pushed out and marketed and um, given to all these different groups to, to let people know too. So that would be a good thing. Um, Matt, are you still there? It's quiet. In the yes, background. I am. Okay, just checking. 
Um, I don't think Anna made it, right? So what do you guys foresee for other goals for this year? What do you think some good goals would be for the committee? In looking at other towns like Lancaster, they get, I shouldn't say involved, but they're, you know, looking at what's going on with Route 70 and, you know, Mary, right? You know what I mean? Um, Lunenburg Road and, you know, I, I mean, to me, as a business owner in Lunenburg Center, I really want to see more dynamic with what's going on in the center of town. I want to see the state come in and, and give us some nice walkways going across the center, um, which there used to be one going from the village over towards where um, the historical society is and the use of some parking there. But I think we need more answers too. And we don't have that as we haven't had in terms of, um, you know, what, what's going to happen in the old primary school space. It, it's not for certain. And, you know, all of these moving parts, I guess you could say. So I, I definitely put on there the goal to have that event again. In September. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that and the holiday crawl in December. Try. Okay. <laughs> no, I think that's a great idea. Um, and the LBA at this time doesn't have anything planned for December. So, okay. so oh, that good. Description, like when you say goals, my the goal that I would think should be included would be just integration with the resources that are already just in Lunenburg. Yep. Um, well, so and I guess what I'm talking about is more intertwined too with what's happening with master planning and how people are expressing what they want to see in the town, you know? Mm -hmm. So something that we do need more of, I think, are um, small business and large business representatives to come and get involved. Get involved. Yeah. I will tell you, Philip Arcity, what uh, that owns the village. Mm -hmm. He is. He keeps saying he's going to have an office upstairs and he's rehabbed one, but he has a partner up there at least too. But he's interested in the master planning aspect um, and was interested in coming to the meeting. So I told him I would um, text him the info in terms mm -hmm. of when and where. Um, and I, I think um, that's important because he owns not just the village, but he owns um, the post office building. He owns the bank building. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yeah, so. we need to we need to hear more. And I think I think sometimes and this is the reason why we had the town official meet and greet is that it seems right. intimidating to approach the town a lot of times. And when you do approach the town, sometimes it's or most of the time it's because you have a problem. So you're like going in already with an issue and that's just, just amplified when you talk to somebody that's mm -hmm. representing down. And I wonder if a lot of the local businesses kind of have a bad taste in their mouth and that's why they're not so involved. But I guess what I would what I would like to see is people coming and representing businesses in Lunenburg. And even if it's not very pleasant things you have to say, come anyways and say that. Like it means more it's to do that. Than, feedback. Yeah, it means more to just share whatever feedback you have than to be silent and um, right. and we can't change it if we don't know type of thing. So yeah. if any of us knew any businesses, I would really push for that because if we want anything to change here, now's the time to use your voice and <laughs> come and right. Um, yeah. But I know that Kathy, you have a lot of connections as far as real estate here and you know a lot of who owns what and I have no idea <laughs> a lot of the time yeah. um, I know a lot no, of the small business owners but the larger companies yeah. I don't have connection to yeah, but it would yeah. be nice to hear from them 
Yep. No, I agree. And by the way, Elena's space is very much available. So um, if anybody has any ideas about any business they'd like to see in there, um, please let me know. Mm. Uh, because I'd really like to see that space get filled with some good long-term business. She was there 22 years. She mm. had a great business. Um, what the can problem, go what the can problem go really is that people want to see a food place. Um, and that you, there's no grease trap there. And, you know, it just, it's a problem. <laughs> so, so if the, um, so I'm thinking of like the cozy tea cart in Brookline, New Hampshire. If you go in their kitchen area, they have a lot of, um, like it's made elsewhere, packaged right. elsewhere. And then right. they bring yeah. it there and it's like heated up, but it's really good because it's fresh. It was just made right. somewhere else. Um, but would that be an option at that location? Yeah, pre-packaged. And that's, I had talked to Marika at Roots, um, mm -hmm. trying to get them to maybe come there. They had had a second location at Orchard Hills and um, she had said she was interested, but she's always too busy and running in all these different directions. And so last time I caught her, she said, I'm just not going to have time. It's like, well, if you don't have time to get over and see it, you're probably, you know, not going to yeah. be able to make the time to do something. So, um, well, it's I really to neat the way that the cozy tea cart does it because all of their stuff, it's not like they're just going to BJ's and stocking up on stuff. It's all like locally made, very That's fresh. Nice stuff yeah but they're just heating it up because they have the they have like the panini press and microwaves and right really all they need to get it warmed up right. and crisp for people to serve but I they don't have a kitchen really so. i talked to um jc at smokestack too hoping maybe hey second location would she do something like that but she said oh, we're busy enough down here mm. so because the t um, town center really needs coffee. <laughs> yeah. Really needs coffee. Um, convenience store has kind of gone downhill there, and it would be good to have coffee. You could talk so. to Rise and Grind in Fitchburg. True. That is an idea. Because okay. that's far enough away. Um, yeah. Where it would, I mean, it makes sense. I think... Yeah. In my mind, JC and her location is a little too close. Yeah. Uh, well, but it's so well known. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, it would be a, just a great fit for the center of town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, so uh, you like, yeah, I could see that if they offered what they offer as far as pastries and whatever else goes. Right. 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 Okay. She didn't have any like time. refrigerators or freezers in there, right? It was all like dry goods. Right. Yeah. Elena did have a fridge for wine, um, oh. but it was all, you know, prepackaged foods in there. So it's a good size space too. It's like 1100 square feet. It's got a back room area. It's got a bathroom. Um, if anybody What's wants this? to see it. How much is it? Which was this? Elena's, Matt. Elena's Gourmet, the previous. Uh, I believe she did have a fridge there because there were cheeses too. Wine. Yeah, oh, and cheese yeah. too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, she sold that. And um, okay. I wish we could have seen another wine and cheese place go in. Mm -hmm. That would have been the best of all worlds, but it didn't happen. So, but yeah, it's 1,100 square feet. It's got a working gas fireplace in there too. Wow. Elena's husband, Paul, had, yeah had redone the fireplace that was there because that was originally a wood burning and turned it into a natural gas fireplace. Um, and it's nice and clean. Um, bizarrely, we have national grid gas there. <laughs> so I know, isn't that weird? Um, so it's not quite as costly as Unitel, but it's still enough. Um, yeah. But if you have good. a listing, like a flyer, I can also put that on the LVA newsletter. Okay. Send out. Yeah, he didn't want it in MLS, so I can send you what we have because essentially it's an office exclusive with um, with the company or with mm -hmm. me. 
Yeah, so. if you have it like in an image format, I can add it to the newsletter. Okay, I can send that to you. So how um, is it they... that there Go was ahead. no grease traps or anything there? Because that was a restaurant before she moved in when it was I when the village that. originally opened. All right. Yeah. Because Oren Oren used to, you know, had that when his place got bought out and they put the gas station up. Okay. Wow. I don't know. Of course, a lot's changed, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, requirements, yeah. But yeah. then what's Bad Larry got, you know? He does. He does have a grease trap at Bad okay. Larry, so. You know, I mean, could it be modified, the space? I mean, what's the possibility I'm, of getting, you know, yeah. getting that to happen? It would be a cute little country store deli type of thing where. Right. Breakfast, like a butcher lunch, no, yeah yeah yeah. like breakfast lunch no no dinner or anything right. like that just like pre-made pasta salads and yeah right. like it would be cool if 357 cattle company oh, could yeah. like go in there and start off there you go <laughs> <laughs> you need a satellite spot <laughs> it's a good location <laughs> do you know how much rent is too much no. Um, he uh, okay. Let me add to that. He wants too much, as I've said to him. Um, so he can be talked down. As For myself, those listening, and, the keywords uh, are: he can be talked down. <laughs> he can be talked down. He wants too much. But note, like for instance, Salon Bliss and the dog holistic dog, dog grooming place next door. We've all worked with him. You know what I mean? And even Jen in the Pilates studio. So, um, yeah, he can be talked down. I think the important thing is filling the space. The town did approach, um, Kathy Herrick contacted me about the space. Um, they want to use it for early voting in March or prior to the March primary. So, so if it's not rented before then, that's um, what's going to take place there. FYI. So, but I have the keys and I'll be back next week. So, um, actually, I have the keys at my office there. So they can be shown anytime. Okay, 651. So, any other thoughts? No? public comment have we no heard any comment. updates about anything going in where that new trucking area is or dan uh dan proctor's place the one the the one that was just finished down on, uh -oh, on the lunenberg shirley road you know yeah you know beyond mary ray yes yeah, um, oh the okay. uh, the warehouse yeah Lunenburg Central. Um, Lunenburg Central. I'm not yeah. aware of anything at this time. I, I don't know that they need to send anything by planning at this point. Sure. Because it's a warehouse. So right. as long as they're doing warehouse things there. There's but no I mean, I don't see any. I mean, I've been by a couple of times and I don't see any activity. No, so that was, you know, it's kind all, of like, that was all part of the business plan. Yeah. Yeah. It's just too they, bad. You know, to yeah, well, it, it's so, that yeah. they had to finish the outside the building, then kind of finish the inside the building, yeah, then attract um, uh, tenants, then build out for the individual tenants yeah. to come inside. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's one of those, it's, it's a long process, but. Mm the people who built it and who own it know full well what they're doing. And this is all part and parcel of the model. So we will be seeing things moving in, but it's just, um, my understanding is it can take a couple of years to get it from looking finished to actually, actually yeah. you know, functioning. Well, plus they were looking at buying the piece across the street, correct? And further building over there? Yes. Um, my understanding is that one thing that would 
influence that would be the eventual uh, water district vote this coming spring. Okay. Uh, the, not water, the, the water supply protection right. by law and map update because it's one of those that if it goes through or some version of it goes through, um, then they are, then it, it's an option for them. If not, then they're stuck under the old rules and they can only cover 15% of the property with impermeable or whatever it is. Mm. And that's not feasible for a warehouse. Right. 15%. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's why I don't, um, I, I don't get into it because I'm not going to present to the town arguments about why, but why we should change a bylaw because it would impact specific like improvements for specific individuals. Cause we shouldn't think that way, but uh, they, I, my understanding is that project could not go through unless that bylaw change does go through. Mm, interesting. Now we're working on that as well to kind of get people to make sure everything is as we understand it and get people better educated. And we'll see more of that coming through as well from the planning board. I wonder if anybody has heard anything from Lufa Farms. I know that project was on hold. Um, last, I don't think I know anything new. Um, okay. Basic. So, I don't remember when we last talked about it, but it's the kind of short. Yeah, the short version is um, they they also had to open a new facility up in Canada, right? And that's right. taken more of their time and energy. Um, and this being their first international venture, right? Uh, there's just more planning and hurdles to overcome. Last I knew, and my info's dated, last I knew they were still very interested and in doing the things necessary to, um, to keep management, uh, basically to keep the property as an option for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, with full intent to move forward, just they have to get all the other ducks in a row. Now, right. I've heard talk, I don't know if it's true that they were planning on using some of the permitting uh, that was originally granted for Bright Farms. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that is correct or even possible. I, I'm, I'd have to double check on all that. If so, there's a little bit of a time constraint there that they're going to start coming up against that three year mark for Bright Farm for when Bright Farms was originally approved. Wow. But yeah. that doesn't mean that they can't. I mean, they have to do some differences anyway. So I don't even know how much that really matters in the end. Right. Okay. Uh, like last okay. I knew they're interested, but um, there's just, you know, they also have a lot of irons in the fire. Right. Yeah, Canada's keeping them mm -hmm. tied up. All right. Where are we at? We have no public on, correct? Now, this is being recorded. I guess Danielle is not with us. Uh, okay. So, no public comment. Um, any other thoughts or comments, anybody? No? All right. So our next meeting last Thursday in person at the Ritter. What's the last Thursday of February? Actually, Heidi itemized all the dates on an email. I think I forwarded it to everybody. Um, did you Thank all you. get it? Yeah. Just makes it easier, right? So the last yep. Thursday, six o'clock, same time at the Ritter. And by that time, we'll have another half hour of daylight at the end of the day. Is that the 29th? Oh, it's leap year. Yes. I will be in Florida for an engagement party. But <gasps> lucky you. Have a okay. great day. Okay. Yeah, is so. that is that February vacation or the week after? That's a week after. Um, okay, cool, cool. Then what else? Okay. I so am always. 
Go ahead. I'm always so confused. Is it the last Thursday or the fourth Thursday of the month? Good point. Um, she because itemized the fourth... email. Hold I thought on. it was the fourth. It is the fourth. Thursday. It's not the last Thursday. It's so. Yeah. It, so it's the first, right. eighth, the fifteenth, the twenty-second would be when we're meeting. Uh huh. Okay, you're right. It okay. is February twenty-second. Yeah. I may not be present for that, depending just because the kids are off that week. But um, okay. I also don't count towards quorum. So, right, right, right. Might. Nor Lou, nor Anna. Okay. I'm around. Okay. Is it... <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, you going? You your excuse on the 29th, Mary Ray. <laughs> uh, Del Rey. Oh, you are. Del Rey Beach. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. I'll probably be coming back here right around that time. <laughs> <laughs> More work. Um, okay. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll be here in dreary weather. <laughs> I make a motion. It'll be spring eventually. Okay. Josie, you make a motion. Anybody second? I second. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Uh, you have to have a roll call. call. Favor. All votes yeah. have to be. Oh, sorry, you're right. Thank and they you. have to be roll call when you're remote. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Josie. Josie Gilchrist, aye. Aye. Mary Ray. Jean. Aye. Jean. Yeah. And I for myself. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. See ya. Melt all red snow so I can come home. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I mean, the driveways are clear. It's, it's okay, Kathy. <laughs> okay. As long as I'm not AC, it's all good. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.